Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, brother, for the words of introduction. First of all, I want to thank you all for the prayers and support for us, ministries, especially for my family. And uh, thank you for your prayers for the Korean family and the Korean family. May the Lord continue to bless you and reward you all according to His riches and glory. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God this morning. We read in 1 Corinthians 15 9, Apostle Paul says, By the grace of God I am the man, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I praise God for his faithfulness in my personal life for the last 55 years. God called me for the service at the age of 15. On my 15th birthday, my dad gave me a Bible verse as a gift. It was from Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, now says the Lord, you are created, O Jacob. And he who called you is here. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you my name. You are mine. The last phrase of that verse touched my heart. God said to me, You are mine. It was God's call to me for his service. I praise God for his enabling grace and faithfulness for the last 40 years of ministry. To God be the glory, great things he has done. God has blessed us, my personal life, my family life, and the ministries abundantly above all what we think or imagine. Great is his openness. All glory, honor, and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer and desire is that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus Christ to, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Please continue to hold us in ministries in your valued ways. In these days, at any other time in history, we recognize that every moment, every breath, every day is a gift from God. So we should be thankful to God for his abundant grace. Many of our friends and relatives passed away last year, but God has granted us one more year to live in this world. The question we always ask ourselves is this, why we are left behind? God has a purpose for each one of our lives. Let's faithfully fulfill the responsibility which God has entrusted in us. We all know that this pandemic season will be over by the end of last year. But as you know, things didn't go as we wished. It continues. We don't know how long it will be. According to the Bible, this is the way the world will be before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ already gave us the warnings and signs about the end times. We see that in the gospel. Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21. There are many things which will continue to happen and it will be more in this world before the second coming of Christ. First of all, spiritual deception. False teachers of actual English. They try to deceive people, even the believers. Every day new doctrines are introduced in this world. Even Christians are confused. What, what is right and what is wrong? We need to look at and meditate the word of God more and more in this days. Secondly, natural calamities or disasters. We know that earthquakes, wars, now Russia, Ukraine, and the families, great diseases like the COVID. See, it will increase all over the world. Thirdly, said, you will be persecuted. Persecutions are increasing against Christians all over the world. 
mainly in the Middle East, China, India, and North Korea, and many parts of the world. When these natural disasters take place, how this normal people will respond to this? We read that in book 21, verse 26. People will be so frightened and they will be pain because of what is happening to the world. But as children of God, we have a great promise in the same chapter, verse 18. But not a hair of your head will be published. What a safety and what a comfort we have in the promise. Do you really believe this promise? See, Jesus exhorts us in this chapter like this, verse 28. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your hearts because your redemption grows near. Look up, not our surroundings, but look up to God. We need to prepare ourselves to meet our Lord. He is coming back soon. Verse 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the statement. So that we may get strength to endure all these hardships. When people face problems or struggles in their lives, there are different ways they respond to God. Some people go away from them. They say, why is this disaster happening in your life? Where is God? Is he a good God? Then why this happen? They come to a conclusion that there is no God. Even some of the youths started to think like that. There are some other people, they always rebel against God. They question God. He is not a good God. Why God allowed this suffering in my life? I lived a good life. I'm helping many good people. I do many good things for others. Then why suffering in my life? Where is God when I am in this church? But there are some other group of people, they are very few in numbers, in the times of all the trouble, they draw near to God. They put their complete trust in God. They come closer to God and rely on God. They will know God very intimately in the time of difficulties. We all go through sorrowful and painful experiences. I don't think that anyone listening to me never had any painful or difficult situations. These are the part of our life. All the godly people in the Bible went through sorrowful experiences. When we study about Job, Abraham, Moses, David, Elijah, some of them even said to God, it is better for me to die now. You know, like Elijah and Moses, even Jonah, they all went through very tough times. But we know that God didn't give them up. We can see how God sustained them and protected them in the difficult times. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus concluded his session with his promise. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Whatever Jesus says, it will happen. Let us believe him and his words. Following these warnings, Jesus gave some important teachings and instructions to his own disciples. We see that from teachings in John's Gospel, chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16. It is relevant and applicable even today. As disciples of Jesus Christ, how can we live confidently in this confused world? What should be our attitude and response when we go through these various trials and difficulties? Jesus gives us clear guidance how to live confidently in this pandemic. I would like to share two thoughts which encourage my heart in this pandemic season. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Let's read that. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. 
that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus is speaking these encouraging verses to those who are troubled in their heart. These, are, uh, these disciples were very sad to hear that their master and Lord is going to depart from them. They were feeling insistent. Knowing their hearts, Jesus is encouraging them with these profound teachings. I encourage you to read these chapters. It will definitely encourage our heart in all the times. Let me tell you one more thing. The teachings in these chapters are more than enough to live a Christian life in this world. All the secrets and fundamental, fundamental teachings of Christian life is given in these chapters. There are some wrong teachings in the Christian world today. When you believe in Christ, all the troubles and problems will be gone. It's a wrong teaching. Jesus said, in this world, you will be out of belief. Even Jesus went through these troubles and trials in his own life. In John chapter 13, verse 21, when Jesus had said this, he became troubled in spirit and testified and said, truly, truly, I say to you, that one of you will betray me. Jesus was troubled about Judas Iscariot, who is going to betray him soon. Even when Jesus was troubled when he knew that Peter is going to deny him. See, John chapter 11, verse 30, we read the story where Jesus came to the place of Lazarus. And Jesus came to the house of Lazarus when Jesus saw Mary's weeping and the Jews who came with their also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. So Jesus can understand the condition of our heart. When we go through all these troubles and difficulties, he knows our inner being. He knows our heart more than anyone in this world. I would like to share three things with Jesus said in this passage. How can we live a peaceful life in the times of trouble and anxiety? Verse one. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. First of all, Jesus says, believe in me. Our faith is not based on some theories. We believe in a person. Sometimes we give more importance to the doctrine than the person in Jesus Christ. We get all doctrines from the book of Romans onwards. But there is a life God has shown to us in the gospel. It is not what we believe, but whom we believe. That is more important. What we believe should be centered on whom we believe. Our focus should be always on Jesus Christ. Jesus said, believe in God and believe in me. The Jewish people always believe in God. They were expecting a Messiah. In the Old Testament, God has given very clearly the promises about the coming Messiah, about his birth in Bethlehem, about his growth, about his life, about his ministry, about his suffering, about his death and resurrection. But when he came to his how many people were prepared to welcome Jesus? Only very few people. Few wise men. There was a prophet of Hannah. There was a God man called Simeon. That's all. That's all the Jewish leaders and Indian people. They were not ready to accept Jesus. We read in John chapter 1, verse 11. When he came to his soul, they didn't receive him. I believe the same condition will be then when Christ comes back again. Here Jesus says to his disciples, I want you to believe in me. Don't let your heart be shaken. Believe me, someone whom we can trust us under trust. Jesus says here, put your trust in me. I am 100% trust of you. Let me ask you one more question. How many of you have believed in Jesus Christ for eternal life or eternal heaven? Well, you may all say, yes, we believe. See, you, you have, have trusted trust in Christ for eternal heaven or eternal life. But, but let me ask you one more question. How many of you were struggling with the things that happened in your life last week? 
If we can trust Jesus to take us all the way to heaven, then Jesus says, why don't you trust me today? If you have not trusted in Christ for eternity, let me encourage you to trust Christ, trust Christ now, because the true Christian life begins here. Jesus Christ told the most important issue so for life in the top of Calvary. That's, That's our sin and our spiritual life. If the death of Christ can solve my eternal issues, how much more a risen Christ can help my daily problems? Bible says, just shall live by life. Speaking about our daily walking life. We believe about our future. We have a great hope that after death we will go to heaven. But what about our faith and hope? Today, for our meat, Jesus taught us to pray like this. Give us our daily bread. God is faithful to help us in any present situation. And He is able to provide all our needs. Do you have that today? Do you have that hope in Christ Jesus? Let's read chapter 1, verse 12. Paul says like that. For this reason, I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to depart what I have entrusted to him until that day. See, this is the last epistle written by Apostle Paul. In his last days, he says, I know whom I have believed, not what I believe. Believe means total dependence. Sorry, total dependence upon Christ is he successful. All may change, but Jesus will never change. He is faithful. We know that word. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Let me read one more verse from Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. We read like this. Oh Lord, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an everlasting God. Our faith should be strong and stable in trusting God. He is our eternal rock. He is unchecked. He is almighty. We know the story of the Christian Abedin When the king said, you will be thrown in the fire if you don't bow down before my statue. You know what they refer If we are thrown in the blazes, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the gold statue you have set up. Whether God deliver us or not, still we will serve only our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the true faith. Whether God answers my prayer or not, still I will trust in God. Whether God heals me or not, still I will serve the Lord. That is the true faith. Do you have this true and strong faith? Then you will be filled with the perfect peace of God. We read in Job chapter 13, verse 15, Job said, even though God may slay me or kill me, still I will trust him. This is the faith God, which God is well pleased. Do you really trust Jesus Christ in this way and attitude? Let me read one more verse from Psalm 4, verse 8. Psalm 4, 8. We see a faith of a godly man. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dull in safety. This is the true faith. This is the true peace. See, in India, we are able to sleep calmly and safely because many soldiers are watching around the clock in the borders and sometimes fighting with enemies at the border. 
Because of their victory, we are safe and secure. I don't know about Canada, but it is very true in India. You know the borders like Pakistan and China. It's not safe for India. So soldiers day and night watch over there with great troubles. Because they are victorious, we are safe and we could sleep without any tension. So victory is through troubles only. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Christ is already victorious, so we have peace. He is risen and he has all authority over heaven and the earth. So victory is always with us. When we realize this truth, we can live peacefully in this world. Let us always focus our trust and hope in Christ Jesus. He is our safety. He is our refuge. See, once Jesus and his disciples were traveling in a boat, suddenly a great storm came. But Jesus was sleeping even in the midst of that storm. You know why? Because he was totally trusting in his heavenly father. He was totally secured in his heavenly father. A great example for us. Disciples didn't have that much faith in Christ Jesus. We know that Jesus rebuked their unbelief. When we face difficult times, how we respond? Can we live peacefully and stay in calm? Believing that our Lord Jesus controls everything and he is on the throne. Secondly, verse 2. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Believe in a place that is heaven. Heaven is my father's house. What Jesus says here, believe in me, I am in control of your future. We may face various troubles and trials in this life. But Jesus says, I am in control of everything. Without this knowledge and permission, nothing will happen to us. We know that beautiful song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. See, I know he holds tomorrow. Jesus Christ encourages his disciples that my home is your home. I am preparing a home for you. I believe Jesus already prepared a place for us through his death and resurrection. A glorified body by his resurrection to live in the heavenly places with God. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Even though we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. You all know my father, Paulus Tudian. He was a very godly man. He knew God very intimately. He had a skin disease from his early age. It's called psoriasis. Once this skin disease aggravated and he was hospitalized. Doctors said there is no hope. He may die within a few days. At that time, he wrote a song. It says like this. Even the skin will decay and may be eaten by worms, but my Redeemer lives and he will give me a glorified body. My father didn't die that time. He lived another 35 years more. Our hope is not in our wealth or not in our health, but only in Jesus Christ. We know that verse from Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. This is our great hope. We read about that in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 25. Let me read that. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. 
for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected to it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to the corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. What a glorious truth. What a blessed hope we have in Christ Jesus. Let me ask you one question. How many of you really believe this truth? Let me go to the third point. Verse 3. John chapter 14, verse 3. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Believe in his promises. We know that when a believer dies, the angel will carry him to heaven. Jesus said, I am coming back to receive you, and he will take us to his home. Jesus wants us to be with him forever, because Jesus loves us very much. We are redeemed children of God by his precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary. And we are very precious to him. We always sing that song. Jesus loves me. This I know. Hold the Bible tells me so. John chapter 14 verse 18. We see a promise of Christ which always encourages my heart. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You will never become an orphan. Orphan means fatherless or without parents. But when you become a child of God, you have a father in heaven. It is an eternal relationship. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to receive you. What a blessed hope we have in Christ Jesus. We read that in John chapter 6, verse 37 also. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast them out. He's coming back soon to receive us. As we read in Luke, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads and because your redemption draws near. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, Peter said that whatever God promised, he will fulfill it. Let me read that verse. Beloved, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as a reminder to stimulate you to hold some thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on, goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. See, Peter says here, whatever the prophets declared, it will fulfill. And whatever Jesus and apostles said, it will fulfill soon. Believe in Jesus Christ and his promises. You know the last verses of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. Jesus said, who, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. I am coming soon. You know the response? of the church there, come Lord Jesus. There is no soon there. <laughs> Do we really pray that, oh Lord, come back soon? See, we see the desire of Christ in his prayer to his heavenly father. We read that in John chapter 17, verse 24. He prayed like this, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me. Christ has a great passion to be with us. He loves us so dearly. And whatever he is doing in heaven is for me and for you. I don't think, I don't know what difficult situation you are going through. I don't know what is your troubles. But believe in Christ. 
He is in control of everything. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is coming back soon to take us to his home. Do you truly believe in Jesus Christ? Do you truly believe that there is a home for you in heaven? If anyone doesn't have this assurance, I encourage you to commit your life to Jesus Christ now. Confess your sins to Christ and he will forgive all your sins. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for your sins. He raised again on the third day to live in your life. Receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. Follow him as a true disciple and live for Christ till the end of your life. While I was a student in school at the ninth grade, one of my classmates died due to brain tumor. When this sad news came to our school, the class teacher and all the students, we went to his house to pay condolence to his family. After that, I came back to my house. My dad asked me, why did you come back early? I explained all the details. After listening all, my, my dad asked me two questions. My son, why you didn't die in your friend's place today? If you would have died today, where you will spend your eternity? This question touched my heart very strongly. I went to my room with a very heavy heart. God's spirit convicted me that moment that I am a great sinner and I deserve only God's judgment. If I die today, I will go to eternal hell. I cried and wept and confessed my sins to Jesus Christ. I prayed like this. I know I am a big sinner. Forgive my sins. Have mercy on me. Make me your child. Come and live in my life. I surrendered my life at that moment. Let me tell you, peace of God filled my heart. I knew that my Lord forgave all my sins. I felt his presence in a special way. I felt like, I felt like that my big burden has gone away from my life. Now I know that if I die today, I'll be with my Lord Jesus in heaven. Do you have that assurance? If the Holy Spirit convicts you now, I encourage you to make a decision today. Jesus loves you. He's always ready to forgive your sins. He welcomes you as you are. He will come and abide in you the rest of your life. If you are already a believer in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage all the believers that Christ is showing us the right way to live today. And he is leading us in the right way to heaven. Let me read one more, a uh, few more verses from John chapter 14, verse 4 to 6. Jesus said, you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. See, Thomas is asking, how can we know the way? See, today we have GPS system and which directs all the routes. All the phones has Google map and it is easy now to find a place. But few years back, there was no GPS. We had to ask people to find the place where we want to go. Like if you are in a busy town, if you don't know the way, you will ask someone. He will give the direction. But sometimes he will come with us to show the way to the destiny. So he become a way for us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the light. He is the way. He will lead us to heaven. He knows the plan and purpose for our life. He knows the place. Christ has a plan for our lives. We are on the way to heaven. In order to know his ways, we need to read the word of God daily and meditate on it. God will show you the way and he will be with you always. We know Psalm 23, a good shepherd. He leads me beside still waters, waters of calmness and peace. He leads me in the way of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with us and he leads me there. There are fearful times, darkness, wild animals, but he is with us. He will lead us to heaven. You know, the last verse in Psalm 23, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a blessed life it is to live under this good and great shepherd. Sometimes this good shepherd will carry us on his shoulders. We know the story in Luke chapter 50. Jesus spoke about a good shepherd who lost one sheep. The shepherd go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing and come back to his home. 
Good Shepherd carry us on his shoulder till we reach our heavenly home. Do you believe in Christ today? Do you believe that you have a home in heaven? Do you believe in his promises? Do you believe in his plan for your life? If you truly believe this truth, you can live a peaceful life in this world. Cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. If you truly believe, you will live for Christ. You will not live for yourselves because this world is not our home. We are the citizens of heaven. Jesus said, we must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is a day. Night is coming when no one can work. So we should use all the opportunities to reach the people with the gospel. Again, we read in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. Let us use our time wisely to reach the people with the word of God. The God who began his good works in and through our life will complete it at his coming. We will see the fruit of our labor at that day. Let us be seen faithful servants and stewards at his coming. Let us fulfill his plan and purpose in and through our lives. If you live, live for Christ. If you die, die for Christ. May the Lord continue to bless each one of us in the coming days. Thank you all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your love and care for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for all the brothers and sisters and children in this assembly. Bless each one of them. Provide all their needs. Let them feel your presence in their lives. Praying for your healing upon those who are sick. Praying for your provision to their needs. Praying for your protection. Lord, continue to bless each one of them. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you all.